What's up, everybody? We're back. Yeah. yeah. Hey, welcome back to the Metal Edge Journey. Hey, so we're back this week. We've done another full rotation of all four of our lists. We are back to the top 20 rock albums of all time. And, uh, man, this list is confusing. Like, it's like sometimes this list is like, holy shit, it's the best thing that's ever happened to us. Dave, were we outside yeah. of 15 seconds on that? <laughs> yeah, we were. Okay, good. Fantastic. Oh, fuck it. Yeah, sometimes this list is like, it's like fantastic. It's like Boston or Queen or uh, Rush. And then yeah. other weeks, it's, it's uh, The Doors oh. and it's The Rolling Stones. And I'm just like, we're, this, out, this, this list was pitching like 100%. And then the last two albums have been rough. And look, it's, we're about to go like three for six on albums here. Because this album, while okay... Um, it was a bit rough. We'll get into that in just a little bit. Let me give you a little history of, uh, of, of our guy here, and we'll get right into it. This is the Jimi Hendrix Experience. This is Electric Ladyland, number 15 on the top 20 rock albums of all time. James Marshall, Jimi Hendrix, born on 11-27-1942, was an American guitarist, songwriter, and singer from Seattle, Washington. Ooh, ooh. Playing guitar at the age of 15, he was inspired by American rock and roll and electric blues. He was instrumental in popularizing the effects like Fuzz Distortion, Octavia, Wah Wah. Hey, man, we wouldn't have Kirk Hammett without uh, Jimi Hendrix and, <laughs> uh, the, and Univibe. Uh, he's been rated by Rolling Stone as the greatest guitarist of all time. Really? We'll talk about that in a little bit. He is widely regarded as one of the greatest musicians of the 20th century. The Rock and Roll Hall of Fame describes him as arguably the greatest instrumentalist and the history of rock music. Sadly, at the age of 27, he died due to a barbiturate-related asphyxia. Mm -hmm. uh, Electric Ladyland, released in 1968, is the third and final album from the Jimi Hendrix Experience. A double album, it was, only, uh, it was the only record from the experience with production solely credited to Hendrix. The band's most commercially successful release, and its only number one album, it was released by Reprise Records in the United States... Um, uh, by mid-November, it had reached number one on the Billboard top charts, spending two weeks there. In the UK, it peaked at number six, where it spent 12 weeks on the British charts. This album features two singles, All Along the Watchtower and Voodoo... No, 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 I'm sorry. Crosstown Traffic. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting yeah. choice. Yeah. So, uh, Rolling Stone, top guitarist of all time. What do you guys think about that? What do we think about that specifically, or what do we think about this album? Well, now, now, see, okay, what, do you, so, what do you think? Of, what do you think about that specifically? Uh, I, I would say, I would say this: uh, he like revolutionized the way people play guitar. Yes. So you have to give him that in in that regard. I can understand why they might say he might be like say the most important guitarist player of all time, but I'm not sure. I'm not sure how you quantify the best or the greatest. Oh, it's all it's all, all subjective. Objective. But like I think the most to your point, Jason, the most objective way you can look at the types of things when it comes to um you know art in general is I think you can only quantify it by based on influence. Um yeah. and, and 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 that's a great call because he's certainly very influential for people that came post like his, his time, his yeah, tenure, right? I mean, yeah. If, if you, if you, if you are ranking guitar or if you're ranking anything based on the impact that someone had in their field, I mean, in terms of impact, I don't know that you can really make an argument that Jimmy's not at a minimum in, in the top four most influential impactful guitarists of all time i mean that truly like broke the mold on what a guitarist could do could do yeah yeah um now yeah now i think a different question maybe the question that you are trying to ask josh or maybe alluding to is how does jimmy hold up to today's current standard of guitar play well i mean i think Look, that's that's the problem, and that's what we've that's the problem we've had so far with the Doors, and the problem we've had with the Rolling Stones so far is 
it's a very big dose of, I think you had to be there in that time, riding the right wave. Um, and by wave, I mean drugs. Um, <laughs> riding the right wave uh, to be able to, I think, to fully understand and appreciate it. Now, I don't, I like, I, the more time I spent with the Jimmy record, I didn't feel the same way about that as I did, like, the Doors record. The Doors record, I don't think you can truly in my opinion, appreciate it unless you are riding high on something. Um, like that's just, I think that's, that's the whole trip of that record. Right. Um, I, I would say this is a lot closer to the Rolling Stones record of, I get it. Like this was, this was different, uh, in its time. And this was probably pretty revolutionary in its time, but, uh, it's just not for me. Like I don't, I don't, I don't understand it fully being here in 2024 um, versus this record coming out in 1968. Like, what's your, what's your idea? on? Yeah. I mean, I don't necessarily disagree with anything you guys are saying. I think based on the conversations we've had, I probably liked this album more than you guys did. Um, And, you know, I'll just give you kind of my overall thoughts in general, but I don't think you can't, you can't deny you can't deny the significance of this album and and Jimi Hendrix as an artist in general, uh, especially as a guitar player. Um, now, has this album aged well? I, in my opinion, I I would say it more or less has, with some caveats, of course. Uh, but again, Hendrix is I mean he's an all time great guitar player. You know, if if we're talking about like the pantheon of guitar gods, he's up there. There's no doubt about yeah. that. And and specifically with the Jimi Hendrix experience, I mean, it's accurately named that because he is the main attraction, you know, not that the rest of the instruments of the other, uh, the other are oh, the other m- the musicians. Other fantastic. They're, they're really good. Um, you know, the drums are really good. The bass is really good. You know, the other, uh, additional instruments that are on some of these tracks, like the saxophone, for example, yeah. fantastic. Um, yeah, but yeah, obviously, they, they obviously a ton of additional like, uh, musicians yes. in the, yeah. But, but obviously in he's the, the star studio. of the show. And and I think another thing that for me at least um, that I took into consideration is that this band and Hendrix himself are it, it's a it's something that really kind of has to be experienced live to really I think appreciate you know how talented and how good the music is um, because the recordings on these songs are rarely the best version of the song if ever. Um, so you think this is one of those things like, had you experienced this live, had we had we had the ability to experience it live now or even then, it would be we'd have a little bit more appreciation for it. I think so. I think so. I think generally speaking, that that would be the case. Um, but other than that, I mean, I did. I really enjoyed Jimi Hendrix's guitar work on a lot of these songs. Some of the songs dragged a bit. Um some of the better songs, despite being better, in my opinion, kind of relied on the same kind of bluesy chord structure. So they weren't necessarily samey, but you could see that they were kind of using a similar similar formula because a lot of it feels like it's just kind of them jamming. And if uh, yeah. from what it sounds like, a couple of these songs are probably recorded live, like at a, a, yeah. a bar or a club or something. So so that affects it as well, because, you know, if you think about other albums that came out around this time and how high some of those production values are compared to this, that kind of puts a little bit of a damper on it for me. But overall, I think, like I said, I probably enjoyed it overall more than some of you or most of you. So we'll get to that specifics yeah. of that later. I don't know, but you bring up like jam band, you know, and it's like there's a lot of moments on this record that I felt that and. There's some bands that I've listened to that I've liked that are jam bands, like Government Mule, especially, like an all-time f- favorite band of mine. Uh, Big Ed Todd, The Monsters, Fish, right? But, I, you know, the difference for me on, like, so I, like, I'll just use Government Mule as my example. So they have a bunch of good records, and their records are pretty tight. Like, they write, you know, anywhere between four and seven-minute songs. But, yeah, you go see Government Mule live, and they take one of those four minute songs and they turn it into 45 minutes mm-hmm, on the stage, mm-hmm. you know, and they take it off into these weird spots and they play. And that's, that's like, that's exactly what this album feels like um, yes. at times is it just feels like we had this, we had this tight idea. And then it was Jimmy was like, Hey guys, go take a break. <clears throat> I got it. 
Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, and then it just it just kind of goes off into this other thing for a little while, right? Or in the case and, of uh, 1983, a merman, I should turn to be. There's just kind of some noises and sounds in the middle of it. <laughs> some ambient noise, yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I've only listened to that song start to finish once. <laughs> I think I think it might be the same for me. It, it, I think it's I think it's something to note that I, uh, I people are gonna flame us in the comments if, if they get this far anyway. Yeah, and I, look, I'm none of, I don't think anybody's trying to shit on the record by any means. No, no, no. I, no. I, I, I just want everybody to, to understand, at least from my point of view, and I, I, I suspect everybody here can share it. I'm sorry, Dave. Is that it's just not for us. <laughs> I, I think that's going to be the name of the game by the end of the record, at least for me. I don't want to speak for everybody. Go ahead. To, to, def- to, to actually maybe disagree with you, Josh. Okay, uh, okay. I want to say that critics at the of this album's immediate release oh yeah they killed it was was not mostly positive it was actually very mixed uh, yeah in fact like you know just reading here while y'all were talking is one reviewer said that called this a mixed up uh called the it was mixed up and muddled and he said with the exception of all along the watchtower it was all over the place yeah and this do you think so? You so what changed it then? Well, so what changed it over the years? Do you think like was it him dying and then posthumously they're like, we only had so much from Jimmy, so now we like now we raise it a level just because of that. I think it's what I, we touched on earlier. I think it's the it's impact him. that the music had, yeah, long term because, versus because short-term. even if even if you can't sit through the the fifteen minute long marathon that is is uh, you know Voodoo Child. Mm-hmm. Uh, there are pieces in there that you're like, you know, that's that's good, and then it yeah. goes into something that's not. But you can hear bits and pieces. There are songs in here, uh, are pieces of song in here where I, I could swear that I've heard it before. Somebody else yeah. uses something that sounds similar to it, or or something that, that's that's more modern, and you're like, yeah, yeah, you can see there's influence. Yeah. Well, I mean, there's some straight up Beatles sound and stuff on here too. Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead, John. No, I was going to say, I think now more than ever, um, one thing that I think we should, that we probably want to make clear is we're not like, you know, professional music reviewers that are like writing an article or something. The way we listen to music and the way that we're, I guess, scoring it and rating it is based mostly a lo- uh, on our experience listening to it, yeah. how it makes us feel and you know, the mood, I guess it puts us in. So that's completely subjective. And, you know, if you're not, again, you hate to keep bringing it up, but if you're not in a different state of mind, your experience watching or listening to this is going to be very different. completely different. Uh, and if you're, and again, the, the recorded versions versus the live version, if, we're, if you're watching this live or listening to this live, sorry, it's a completely different experience. Yeah. A live band versus, you know, the yeah. the recorded, arguably inferior versions of these songs. Yeah. Jason, what do you think about the record? Uh, this uh, this falls into one of the, the categories. Like, I I, I respect Jimi Hendrix. I, I know you know a lot of the the hits and stuff, but this kind of falls into some of the other stuff that we've listened to, where I've just never gotten around to listen to an album start to finish. Uh, so while I wasn't exactly keen on listening to this album, uh, when it popped up, cause I looked at the track list and I'm like, I have, I know two songs on this entire album. We were probably all on the same. Yeah. So I'm like, yeah. okay, well, you know, but, but here we go. And, uh, I was disappointed. I, I was disappointed. I think I was disappointed more like just in the fact that I didn't get much enjoyment from, uh, a large portions of it. like. The, the I, if you like the blues, you like funk, and if you like jam sessions, you like psychedelic music. There's pit. I'm sure you probably like half this album. The problem is, is I don't really like any of those genres. And this is Jason. Just full of it. What genre of music do you like? I don't know. <laughs> I think I think all of our fans want to know. I, I I I like I like blues, but I like like old school blues, like a single, single like musician. Like 1968 blues? blues? No, like a single musician. Well, no, that was the year you were born. Obviously, that's not a, old school to you. With a gu- guitar in his hand, you know, singing about some real issues. Those are the blues that I like. 
So country. And and I think I think you no, probably uh, like a more tightly constructed song as well versus yeah. something yeah. that's very very Anything, loose and like, flowing. And look, we definitely know I've, that. I've I've been absolutely uh, on point uh, across the board on whoever it is. Anytime you have a ten minute plus song. Yeah, Jason, who'd you have as the MVP for this record? Ah, uh, it's Jimi Hendrix. It's not even close. I, mean, I like, feel like we don't even need to go through that. Yeah, really. it's Jimmy, a, Jimmy Sweep. It's a Jimmy I do Sweep. Want to, I do want to give some love. Uh, Noel Redding, Mitch Mitchell, the other two musicians mainly uh, showing up on this record. Noel Redding, the, bass, the bassist. Mitch Mitchell, the drummer. Um, look, musically, they are like, very, I, I think, very talented. Those guys. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like, they didn't, it's a they good didn't group. just give Jimmy just some, like, aimless uh, session drummers to, or session musicians to just you know, stand in the back and play, you know, just very yeah. simply. Uh, those guys can go. They, yeah. They, they keep up with Jimmy, I think, a lot. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So definitely, I mean, obviously Jimmy, I mean, he produced a record. He wrote most of the song. So that's an obvious answer. But uh, what about best riff? Um, that's kind of the problem for me is this isn't. <laughs> I, I don't feel like this is a very riff driven album. Uh, yeah, and so there is an answer though. Um, I have one. But I mean, is it is it all along the watchtower? No, no. Or is it? Come on, brother. What is it? Come, come on, brother. It's the it's Voodoo Child. I mean, it's that it's that lick oh. for Voodoo Child at the at the beginning. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I'm gonna I'm gonna go differently. Oh, okay, but it it is an opening lick, and it is the uh, the the opening slap riff. On uh, Gypsy Eyes, mm. uh, Jason's favorite song. Very good, Jonah. So what you I, got? I had, I actually have a, a runner-up. Um, it's the main riff, I think. From come, on, I think it's the main riff from um, "Come On, Let the Good Times Roll." I think that's actually okay. a really good song. And then also the the intro part of uh, "1983." Um, there's like the there's like a chord progression, then he plays like a lick on top of it. That beginning section I think is really cool, and it I don't know if I'm if I'm the only one who who heard this, but that specific lick that he plays almost sounds similar to the main riff from Unforgiven too. Yeah. Mm. Yes, I did. Well, hear well that. Kirk Hammett has has been has outwardly said that he's like hijacked a ton of Jimmy stuff in his solo. Yeah, stuff. yeah. So but anyway, so the connection, and I thought it was a really cool lick. That's my runner-up. But yeah, it's got to be Voodoo Child. I mean, the most iconic, most recognizable Jimi Hendrix yeah. riff. It's a great lick. It it's is. for a reason. It's for a reason. If you told you me know, that was the like, wah-wah. If you, yeah, if you told me that was in the top 10, like, I don't know if you want to call it a lick or if you want to call it a riff or whatever, but if you told me it was the top 10 of whatever you want to call it, I'm, a, I'm good with that. Like, yeah. I think that, that riff fucking slaps. It does, and I mean, look, I'm not, I'm not saying I, uh, I like Hulk Hogan as, as a person, but I mean, Hulk Hogan, <laughs> Hollywood Hulk Hogan, coming out to that in his WCW years was pretty fucking good too. Yeah, yeah. Although it was, it was, it was very expensive for them to use that, so they could only use it one time during the show, and then he yeah, had to come out to the regular NWO music after that. In case you ever wondered, uh, Jonah, what are your uh, top tracks from this record? So, um, again, yeah, I think I'm to choose from. Yeah, I think I liked the the album a little better than than some of you guys did, but because I, I do have a runner up, it's uh, "Rainy Day, Dream Away." Mm-hmm. Um, oh wow! The the sax and the guitar work together. It's got a really good solo. Um, I actually like that song. Um, uh, number three is going to be "Come On, Let the Good Times Roll." It's a solid jam. Uh, number two, "All Along the Watchtower." That was almost my number one, but again, for the same reasons we just mentioned with Best Riff, it's got to be Voodoo Child. He, it's an all-timer, it's a classic. The guitar, the solos, I mean, everything, it's, it's, it's the most complete package, if you will, track, I think, other than All Along the Watchtower on the album. Most, yeah. most complete original song, we'll, we'll say that. You know what's what's interesting too is like so all along the Watchtower is the biggest song that he ever had, and it's a cover. You know, it's mm-hmm. a Bob Dylan cover. So that's I don't know. I it's like Alien Ant Farm, right? And I'm sorry, I'm not trying to compare Jimi Hendrix to Alien Ant Farm. <laughs> what, but, a, what a trend. But I mean, 
But it's just funny that it's like your you're like your your best song, your greatest song ever is a cover, man. I don't know. It's weird. Most uh, popular. Hey, Mike, yeah, I'll go uh, next year. Top tracks for me. Uh, I feel like I'm going a little bit chalk here, um, but it just kind of is what it is, man. Number three for me, Crosstown Traffic. Love this song. Um, full transparency, I, I first heard this song in the movie SWAT uh, mm-hmm. when they're going through like a training montage. And then I always dug that fucking song. And then when it came up on here, I was like, oh, okay. So that was good. Uh, Voodoo Child, number two for me. Love the track, love the lick. But number one for me is All Along the Watchtower. I, I just think that's a truly great song. Um, that would be a song that would be, I don't know, in some long list of one of my favorite tracks of all time. Maybe top 200, something like that. Great sure. song. Uh, I'll go real quick. Um, Josh, you're a genius. Uh, my number three is, is Gypsy Eyes. Jason, smart man. That is a good song. Um, my number two is Voodoo Child, and I'm gonna pr- I'm gonna go with the UK uh, spelling because the it's it's Voodoo Child Slight Return it doesn't even make yeah. sense that it's Voodoo Child Slight Return. The first song is called Voodoo Child, and it's a callback yeah. to that song. So that's stupid. Yeah, number two, <laughs> Voodoo Child, a Voodoo Child Slight Return, and then number one is All Along the Watchtower. I mean, <clears throat> you know that song Hurt by um, Help Me Out, gentlemen. Johnny Cash. Uh, Nine Inch Nails. And then done by Johnny Cash. Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. Johnny Cash kind of transformed Hurt and made it his song. I think that's what that's Jimmy crazy. did here. It was yeah. all along the Watchtower. Like, it's like Metallica and Am I Evil, right? Like, who cares about, uh, yeah. you know, all, Bob Dylan and All Along the Watchtower? <laughs> it's, it's all about Jimi Hendrix and All Along the Watchtower. And it's, it's my favorite song on the record. Josh. It's it's definitely chalk, low hanging fruit, but you know we're here. Yeah, go ahead, Jason. All right, so my number three is uh, Voodoo Child. My number two is uh, is a surprising one. It's Gypsy Eyes, and it's mm-hmm. only because that song didn't hit me until today on my uh, last two uh, run throughs on this album. I I, I try to listen to uh, in the end. I try to listen to an album. It, as background and then when something grabs me then i go look at the, the track and then i'll listen to it again and that that was gypsy eyes and uh number one all along the watchtower hands down nice all right well hey so we're, we're coming into the last category here um jesus i was wondering what was going on we're coming into the last category here i accidentally hit uh, hit play on my spotify somehow I was like, dude, somebody's got something going on in the background. It was me. Um, <laughs> so we're coming to the last category here. This is where we like to give our score for the record. And just to give you some context, um, an average score for a lot of folks out there is a seven. Well, an average score for us is a five. So anything 4.9 and below is various levels of we would not recommend this album. Anything five and above is various levels of we would recommend it. And anything between a nine and a ten is like an all-time great record. Uh, Jonah, I think you're going to be the highest person. So I'm going to save you for last... Okay. Um, tribute. Um, yeah, okay, go ahead, Dave. So I <laughs> You're gonna jump on the landmine first. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I um yeah, yeah, yeah. I had to look I had to I had an idea for what my score was. I go based on just like feeling heart. That's kind of what I do first. And then sometimes I'll before we go live, I'll kinda of look at what I gave previous albums and tweak my score a little bit based on where I think it stands compared to those, right? It's not an exact science. It's more of a feeling type of thing. But more by feel, yeah. Yeah. Right. So, like, I, I, um, I had an idea for my score before we went, and then I looked at my score on some of the other songs. I did tweak this. It to this album's benefit, my score went up a little bit. I'm sitting at a five point five. It's just at a recommend for me, um, and it, it's a recommend with an asterisk. Uh, it's if you're if you're on drugs. <laughs> namely you know uh lsd, LSD, LSD acid, or, or marijuana some type of hallucination. um <laughs> this is probably your this, jam this will be your jam but i made this analogy and josh knows who worked with me a long time i'm the king of analogies here chicken tenders got to be good without the sauce and just like <laughs> chicken tenders music has to be good without the sauce meaning drugs so <laughs> that's why it's a 5.5 with an asterisk um, so if you're on drugs, this might be a 7.5, but we don't know right. with the sauce here. 
<laughs> yeah. Jason, go ahead. Um, I, I, me and Jonah kind of score, uh, score our stuff similarly. Uh, we go song by song. Uh, some of these are just uh, cutters because they are just uh, they're one minute nothings. And uh, this this rating would be higher if you didn't have two 15 minute jam sessions that I just despise. Uh, so I ended up at a 5.4. Mm. Oh. All right. Um, yeah, look, I, I want to give context to my score in terms of I think there. I, I recommend this album for somebody out there. I'm just. I'm just at a point right now where I. I wish I could go back in time and be of the mindset of hearing this for the first time and probably be being blown away by the sound of it. Um, I'm just not at there right now, but I, I want to recognize that this album has some redeeming qualities and it's got a lot of influence. Uh, I'm at a five point one. Okay. I do talk this up and <laughs> my level of enjoyment um, of it is probably more like a three and a half. But <laughs> right, again, right. I need I feel like I need to reiterate this here because I'm sure we're getting people who are like five, five, you guys hated the record. Again, turn off your brain. Like this isn't high school. A five <laughs> isn't a failing score. Like no. like like five is still we still recommend you listen to it. It's yeah, just- Jonah. Jonah's going to turn his thing around. Yeah. So I mean, I think another another asterisk I'll <laughs> add from from what Dave was saying is, if you are an aspiring guitar player, you know, it, much like in a lot of other, I guess, fields of study, knowing the history of the craft and like kind of the roots helps i think have a better understanding and appreciation for it so if you're like an aspiring guitar player or just maybe an aspiring musician in general i almost feel like at the very least it's required it's required material yeah you need to be familiar with it you don't necessarily have to love it or have it on repeat but you need to at least be familiar with it that said i did enjoy it more than you guys did definitely um and my score reflects that i think there are some solid tracks there are some absolute there's there's at least two absolute bangers in my opinion there are some fairly solid tracks, and the rest of it is pretty mid. Um, so that said, my score ended up at a 6.4. Yeah. Hey, look, and, and to be completely fair, this scored higher than the two previous records on this list, and I think rightfully so. I think yeah, so. I, I think so. Now, not much higher, admittedly. We're at a 5.6, um, so, which is... Kind of right where we all are anyway, minus Jonah. Um, mm. And uh, that that is a C tier, everybody. That's a C tier. It's not a failing grade um, for us. So, you know, again, just to recap, we enjoyed it to a degree. Recommend that it is important, but... Yeah. So what, did the, all that. what did the Stones record get? 5.38 and the doors got a 4.95 so actually we Oof. generally don't recommend the like kind of yeah. right there on the cusp mm-hmm. yeah i think uh, that's fair i think so too i think it's fair right. look i know we're in for some we're in for a treat next time we get up we get back around to the rock list but uh tell, mm. tell people where we're at so they yeah so uh the number 14 uh album on the rock list and this is going to be like a month away so don't get too excited but it's led zeppelin 2 so it's the brown bomber record um bruh that's going to be so good that's going to be a breath of fresh air uh i i do not think that i've actually listened to that album start to finish Ooh, fossil you're in for a treat brother i hope so hey all right yeah Hey, if you watch this video start to finish, and go ahead and hit the like, hit the subscribe. We're putting out weekly metal content right now. we got metal reactions, metal reviews, metal time machines, and metal brackets, and all kinds of other cool shit. And hey, in the meantime, live long and prosper. Take it easy, everybody. Later. Peace.